there are total four parathyroid glands two parathyroids are behind the superior poles of thyroid gland whereas two parathyroid glands they are just behind the inferior poles of thyroid gland one of the interesting thing about parathyroid glands is that if two of four parathyroid glands are removed then there is no any major physiological abnormalities if three of four parathyroid glands are removed from the body then there will be transient hypoparathyroidism but a single parathyroid remaining can undergo significant hypertrophy to perform the functions of all the four glands parathyroid gland contains two types of cells more abundant small chief cells that secrete parathyroid hormone and less abundant larger oxyphil cells the function of oxyphil cell is not known but probably they are modified or depleted chief cells that no longer secrete hormone parathyroid hormone containing 84 amino acid is synthesized as a part of larger polypeptide called preproparathyroid hormone preproparathyroid hormone it is synthesized in ribosomes which contains 115 amino acid when this polypeptide enters endoplasmic reticulum some sequence of amino acid is removed to form proparathyroid hormone which contains 90 amino acid when proparathyroid hormone enters the golgi apparatus six amino acids are removed to form parathyroid hormone containing 84 amino acid this parathyroid hormone is packaged in the secretory vesicles and released from chief cells the half life of parathyroid hormone is about 10 minute and normal plasma parathyroid hormone level is 10 to 55 picogram per ml parathyroid hormone it exerts its actions on three organs kidney bone and in the intestine indirectly via vitamin d3 so how it acts on each organ now we will see this figure explains how parathyroid hormone it increases the calcium reabsorption from the renal tubules and how it decreases the phosphate reabsorption In the renal tubule calcium is reabsorbed mainly from three reasons first proximal tubule second thick limb of ascending loop of henle and third distal tubule among these three reasons parathyroid hormone increases the calcium reabsorption in two reasons thick limb of ascending loop of henle and in the distal tubule the mechanism of calcium reabsorption is similar in all three reasons so This figure shows the tubular cells. On the left side is the renal interstitial fluid and basolateral membrane, and on the right side is the tubular lumen and luminal membrane. Calcium is reabsorbed by two ways: paracellular pathway and transcellular pathway. The passive reabsorption of calcium because of slight more positive charges in the lumen is called paracellular pathway means between the cells. calcium is reabsorbed from between the cells and next is transcellular pathway this is active pathway so transcellular means from the lumen into the cells and from cells to the renal interstitial fluid on the luminal membrane we can see calcium channels calcium is reabsorbed through this channel goes into the cell and from cell to the renal interstitial fluid is reabsorbed by two ATP bases first one is calcium ATP base pump and second one is calcium sodium antiport so parathyroid hormone again it affects the calcium reabsorption only in the ascending loop of henle and in the distal tubule and parathyroid hormone it mainly affects the transcellular pathway it does not stimulate the paracellular pathway and parathyroid hormone it activates all the channels mainly calcium ATP and sodium and calcium antiport on the basolateral membrane in the loop of henle this is exactly the mechanism of reabsorption of calcium but in the distal tubule there is no paracellular pathway of calcium reabsorption there is only transcellular pathway of calcium reabsorption so next one is 
parathyroid hormone also decreases the phosphate reabsorption. How? So this cell is of proximal tubule. In the proximal tubule in the luminal membrane, there is import of sodium and inorganic phosphate. Parathyroid hormone it inhibits this import and decreases the reabsorption of phosphate from the proximal tubular cell. So in this way, in the kidney, parathyroid hormone it increases calcium reabsorption and decreases phosphate reabsorption. It increases calcium reabsorption by acting on the thick limb of ascending loop of Henle and distal tubule, whereas parathyroid hormone it decreases the phosphate reabsorption by acting on the proximal tubule. This figure describes the osteoclastic resorption of bone by parathyroid hormone. Before explaining this figure, one important thing to note is if parathyroid hormone is given continuously, then it causes resorption of bone. But if parathyroid hormone is given intermittently, that is if there is pulsatile release of parathyroid hormone, then it causes the bone deposition. And this therapeutic concept is used in the treatment of osteoporosis. So this is the figure of bone. The green color cells are osteoblasts and under the bone osteocytes they are encased in the bone matrix. Parathyroid hormone it converts pre-osteoclast into osteoclast. This is osteoclast and this is pre-osteoclast. Parathyroid hormone converts pre-osteoclast into osteoclast but pre-osteoclast they do not have the receptors for parathyroid hormone receptors for parathyroid hormone they are present on the osteoblast so when parathyroid hormone binds to its receptor on the osteoblast then it activates rankle that is receptor activator for NFKB ligand on osteoblast and at the same time on binding of parathyroid hormone on the receptor on osteoblast it inhibits osteoproteogerin this osteoproteogerin it binds with the rankle that is receptor activator for nfkb ligand of osteoblast itself pre osteoclast it has two receptors one is receptor activator for nfkb it binds with receptor activator for NFKB ligand on osteoblast. Second receptor present on the pre-osteoblast is receptor for macrophage colony stimulating factor that is blue color here. This receptor for macrophage colony stimulating factor of the pre-osteoclast binds with macrophage colony stimulating factor of the osteoblast. So when rankle of osteoblast binds with the rank of pre-osteoclast and macrophage colony stimulating factor of osteoblast binds with its receptor on pre-osteoclast then pre-osteoclast gets differentiated into osteoclast so osteoclast it contains lysosomes and inside the lysosomes are the enzymes and also in the mitochondria and secretory vesicle osteoclast contains acids like lactic acid citric acid when this osteoclast binds to the surface of bone, it releases lysosomes which contain enzymes and it releases acids that is lactic acid and citric acid. Enzymes released from the lysosomes, they degrade the organic matrix of the bone, whereas acids released from mitochondria and secretory vesicles cause the dissolution of bone salts. So in the osteoclastic resorption of bone, the important role of parathyroid hormone is to convert pre-osteoclast into osteoclast. But the receptors of parathyroid hormone are not present on osteoclast, pre-osteoclast. They are present on osteoblast. And again I am revising, when parathyroid hormone it binds with its receptor on the osteoblast, it activates rankle, that is ligand, receptor activator for NFKB ligand and it inhibits osteoproteogerin. So if there was osteoproteogerin, it would combine with rankle and it would not allow rankle to bind with rank of preosteoclast. Likewise, other hormones that activate the rankle and inhibit the osteoproteogerin are glucocorticoids. 
whereas estrogens they stimulate or they they stimulate the production of osteoprotegerin then this osteoprotegerin protegerin binds with rankel of osteoblast and does not allow it to combine with rank of pre osteoclast thus estrogens they are given in osteoporosis parathyroid hormone it does not act directly on the intestines it acts indirectly through vitamin d3 this diagram shows the activation of vitamin d3 and how it exerts its actions on intestine and what is the role of parathyroid hormone in this process so let's see this conversion pathway in the skin cholecalciferol or vitamin d3 is formed from 7 dehydroxy cholesterol by ultraviolet rays of sun cholecalciferol it is converted into 25 hydroxy cholecalciferol by enzyme 25 hydroxylase in the liver in kidney this 25 hydroxy cholecalciferol is further hydroxylated into 125 dihydroxy cholecalciferol also known as calcitriol this is the most active compound of vitamin d3 in the intestinal epithelium this calcitriol it actually goes into the nucleus of the cells there it increases the transcription of dna mrna is formed mrna is released from nucleus into the cytoplasm that is translated into the proteins these proteins are calcium binding protein calcium stimulated atpases and alkaline phosphatases these all three proteins they are present on the bruce border of the intestinal epithelial cells these all these proteins they help in the absorption of calcium from the intestinal lumen into the blood so plasma calcium level will increase plasma calcium it has negative feedback on parathyroid hormone it means if plasma calcium is increased it suppresses the production of parathyroid hormone but when plasma calcium is decreased then it increases the production parathyroid hormone it its role is on the kidney that is it activates the enzyme 1 alpha hydroxylase which helps in the conversion of 25 hydroxy cholecalciferol into calcitriol the most active compound of vitamin d3 which is 1000 times more potent than cholecalciferol let's now summarize the actions of parathyroid hormone when plasma calcium decreases then it is sensed by calcium sensing receptor of the parathyroid cells that is when plasma calcium decreases calcium sensing receptor is activated less when calcium sensing receptor is activated less parathyroid hormone will increase when plasma calcium increases then calcium sensing receptor will be activated more when calcium sensing receptor is activated more parathyroid hormone secretion will be less so now we have here plasma calcium decreased then calcium sensing receptor will be activated in lesser amount when it is activated less parathyroid hormone is released in more quantity this parathyroid hormone it has direct actions on the kidney and bone in kidney it increases calcium reabsorption by acting on the ascending loop of henle and on the distal tubule and it decreases the phosphate reabsorption by acting on the proximal tubule in the bone parathyroid hormone it increases the conversion of pre osteoclast into osteoclast and causes the resorption of the bone and calcium efflux from bone to the blood but it has indirect effect on the intestine meaning first it activates the conversion of vitamin d3 that is it activates vitamin d3 to form the most potent compound of vitamin d3 that is calcitriol and this acts on the intestine to increase calcium reabsorption and phosphate reabsorption so parathyroid hormone acts on the kidney to decrease calcium reabsorption but it acts on the intestine to increase phosphate reabsorption but the effect of parathyroid hormone to decrease phosphate reabsorption is more potent in kidney that's why the net effect of parathyroid hormone is to increase plasma calcium level and to decrease 
phosphate level in the blood.